بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد كونتيني إن شاء الله شرح زاد المستقنع in the, and we are in the book of the zakat in the book of the zakat uh, we have studied last time uh, last time باب زكاة بهيمة الأنعام بهيمة الأنعام about the cattle and the zakat related to it يقول المصنف رحمه الله تجب في إبل وبقر وغنم إذا كانت سائمة الحول أو أكثر سائمة الحول أو أكثر So we said that is obligatory in the إبل الإبل كامورز البقر كاوز الغنم شيف and goats إذا كانت سائمة الحول سائمة it means that it eat from the pasture, it eat from the grass, and no, with no effort of providing the food by the owner. Al-Hawl, which is the, the main part of the year. Aw akthara, aw akthara, so the Hawl, a whole year, or the uh, main part of the year. فيجب في خمس وعشرين من الإبل بنت مخاض وفيما دونها في كل خمسين شات فيجب في خمس وعشرين من الإبل in every twenty five camel the zakat is بنت مخاض بنت مخاض this year وفيما دونها في كل uh, uh, yes more than uh, two years وفي وفيما دونها في كل خمس شات في كل خمس شات المخاض is one year and then for every five one goat وفي ست وثلاثين بنت لبون and the zakat of sixty thirty six is بنت لبون وفي ست وأربعين حقة حقة وفي إحدى وستين جذعه وفي ست وأربعين فوري سكس وساد الحقة وفي إحدى وستين جذعه سكستي وان جذعه and we studied all this وفي ست وسبعين بنت لبون تو دوتر لبون في سبنتي سكس ست وسبعين وفي إحدى وتسعين حقتان ميني وان تو حقة فإذا زادت عن مئة وعشرين واحدة فثلاث بنات لبون So if it's more than 121 three daughter لبون three female لبون ثم في كل أربعين بنت لبون وفي كل خمسين حقة Then after that Someone will be uh, calculating or computing for every 40 bintu laboon and for every 50 one haq. Taib. This is what we have studied already last time. Uh, now we go to the zakat al-baqar. Qala faslun fi zakat al-baqar. قال ويجب في ثلاثين من البقر ويجب في ثلاثين من البقر تبيع أو تبيعة تبيع أو تبيعة زكاة البقر زكاة البقر this is after the إبل and this is one of the uh, you know category to pay the زكاة on the cattle therefore the camel the cows and then الغنم الغنم we said sheep uh, or and uh, and goats. قال والبقر سميت بقرة لأنها تبقر الأرض بالحراثة أي تشقها. بقرة is like to يشق and يشق is to split or to make a split in the uh, in the earth. So because the بقرة is used to plow the earth to cross and to dig the earth. Digging and splitting, that called baqara, you know, baqara. 
Al-Baqru is to cut or to split. And from that, because of the, uh, the, the cow which uses it for such a thing, so they call it Baqarah, Baqarah, from Shaqq al-Ardi for plowing the earth. وَيَجِبُ فِي ثَلَاثِينَ مِنَ الْبَقَرِ تَبِيعٌ أَوْ تَبِيعٌ وَيَجِبُ فِي ثَلَاثِينَ مِنَ الْبَقَرِ تَبِيعٌ أَوْ تَبِيعٌ So here we have the nisab. The nisab is then when someone reach 30 cows, he will give the zakat of 30 cows tabi'un aw tabi'a. Tabi'un is the mal and tabi'a is untha. Likulli wahidin minhum sana. So the cow with one year, one year old called tabi'a, called tabi'a. And the female tabi'a, the female tabi'a, call it tabi'a. The female is called tabi'a. So the tabi'a is the cow who has one year of, old, uh, of age. And you see here, uh, for the evil, for the evil, all of them, they are female. Okay? Qala bintu makhad, bintu labun, hiqqa, and jada'a. Here is either you can give tabi'a or tabi'a. Tabi'a or tabi'a. Therefore here, less than 30, there is no zakat for less than 30. There is no zakat for less than 30. And you see between the camel and the uh, cows, there is a big difference. Between al-ibl and the baqar, there is a big difference in the zakat. Because the nisab for the camel starts with five camels. And for the Baqar, start with 30. But when it comes to the sacrifice, they are the same. They are the same. The camel or the, or the, or the uh, Baqar, they, uh, they satisfy for seven. Seven families, both. Qawli wa fi arba'ina musinna. Now, when we get to Arba'in, Musinna. Al Musinna. Al Musinna. The one. So here, female, two years old. Female, two years old. And between 30 and 40, there is the increase without zakat, what we call waqs, al-waqsu, nine. Nine cows without zakat. ثُمَّ قَالَ ثُمَّ فِي كُلِّ ثَلَاثِينَ تَبِيعٌ وَفِي كُلِّ أَرْبَعِينَ مُسِنَّةٌ Then, in every 30, tabi'un, one year old. Wa fi kulli arba'ina musinna, in every 40, musinna, two years old. Then we have, in every 50, He said, وَفِي أَرْبَعِينَ مُسِنَّ وَفِي سِتِّينَ وَفِي سِتِّينَ تَبِيعًا وَفِي أَرْبَعِينَ مُسِنَّ وَفِي سِتِّينَ تَبِيعًا So for 40, we have one musinna. And for 60, we have tabi'an. أي two tabi'a. It's either tabi'an uh, male or female or male and female. 
because we already have 430, one tabi'a or tabi'a. For 40 Muslim, for 60, so it will be two tabi'a. قَالَ ثُمَّ فِي كُلِّ ثَلَاثِينَ تَبِيعٍ Then every time you add 30 tabi'i, if there are 40, musin. So if we have uh, 60, 60 is to have two tabi'i. The next increase of the payment of the zakat comes at 90. Therefore, from 60 to 89, there is no zakat. The zakat is unchanged. So, he says, ففي خمسين, في خمسين مسنة. وفي ستين تبيعان أو تبيعتان. So from from sixty from fifty to sixty من أربعين إلى ستين وقص وفي سبعين تبيع ومسن في سبعين if you have seventy yes you have forty and thirty. وفي ثمانين in eighty you have مسنتان وفي تسعين you have three تبيعات وفي مئة تبيعان ومسنة وفي مئة وعشرين أربع تبيعات four أو ثلاثة مسنات four تبيعات or three مسنات like the same for the case two hundred in an ibel so we apply the same rule we had for the Ibel. And uh, so this is you go like the fraction or the, the, the increase will be uh, 30 and 40. 30 Tabi'a, 40 Musin. Now, in case when uh, the Fard, the Zakat, is in this case, قال في مئة وعشرين أربعة تبيعات. In hundred twenty cows, he going to give four tabi'a or three musin, three musin. In two hundred camels. We have is either five banati laboon, female laboon, or four hiqqa, hiqaq, four from hiqqa. The question, which one someone should give when you have them equal? For example, for the cow, will he has to pay the four tabi'a or the three musinna? Therefore, he said, who's the one who's going to have the choice? The one who's paying or the one who's receiving? The priority is being given for the payer. He chooses. This is the Rahmah of Islam because he has to pay. So tell them, pay, you know, whatever is easy for you. So the, the priority is being given to the payer. If he has to pay three, uh, in this case, four tabi'a or three musinna, he will choose. ثُمَّ يَقُولُ وَيُجْزِئُ الذَّكَرُ هُنَا When the male is will be accepted, so he wants to give like you know kind of an observation to see where the male uh, uh, cow is accepted here. قال ويجزي الذكر هنا, which is mean in the zakat of the cows, 
ففي ثلاثين من البقر يجزئ تبيع as you see so it will be you know the zakat it will be allowed to be paid by a male cow in 30 and more قال وابن لبون مكان بنت مخاض and also the male لبون instead of binti makhad will be accepted because the laboon is older and the older the camel more valuable and the makhad is a year so to give uh, a laboon male is kind of more valuable than a makhad which is a year وَإِذَا كَانَ النِّصَابُ كُلُّهُ ذُكُورًا and if the owner he only has male, then certain scholars they allow him to pay from what he has. Therefore, according to the author, the male animal can be paid as a zakat in three cases. In three cases. In cows at tabi'u fi thalathi. For every thirty in the cows he can pay tabi'a. The male laboon, instead, in place of the female makhad, in case the owner he doesn't have a female makhad, it will be accepted. Third, according to the author, if the whole animal he has, in case of the cows here or camel, they are male then it will be allowed to him to pay in the male he has, from the male animals he has. Example, if he has 25 of the camel, all of them male, he has to pay uh, instead of paying bint makhad, he will pay a male makhad. Concerning here, they said you cannot, you know, you, someone should not burden someone, uh, think that he doesn't have. But can we do analogy and qiyas in this matter? Some of the scholars, they said, if the nisab is all men, فَيَجِبُ مَا عَيَّنَهُ الشَّارَةِ The shara, he's the one who decides. So even if he has it, he has to pay what the shara already prescribed, what he has put as a standard, which is بِنْتُ مَخَاب. فَلَوْ كَانَ عِنْدَهُ خَمْسٌ وَعِشْرُونَ مِنَ الْإِبْلِ كُلُّهَا ذُكُورُ وَجَبَ عَلَيْهِ بِنْتُ مَخَاب. Even if he has only the male from the 25, the zakat should be bin to makhar. فَإِن لَمْ يَجِدْ فَابْنُ لَبُونَ in the car. So if he doesn't have, then he will pay ibn labun, which is like in the value, is like older, you know, better in value, and it might be the female, you know, have the same value as the makhar. قَالَ فَإِن لَمْ يَجِدْ فَابْنُ لَبُونَ in the car. وَإِن كَانَ عِنْدَهُ سِتَّةٌ وَثَلَاثُونَ جَمَلًا فَفِيهَا بِنْتُ لَبُونَ If he has 36 jamal, jamal is the camel, the male camel, and the naqa, the female camel. فَفِيهَا بِنْتُ لَبُونَ He has to pay بِنْتُ لَبُونَ Female لَبُونَ وَلَا يُجْزِئُ إِبْنُ لَبُونَ And you cannot pay here إِبْنُ لَبُونَ This uh, opinion is very, you know, uh, goes with the, with the uh, legacy and with the tradition of the sunnah, what being. لأن السنة عينت السنة عينت السنة specified what the type of uh, animal they need to be offered and paid as zakat فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بنت مخاض أنثى فإن لم تكون فابن لبون so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم specified is a female مخاض if there is no then a male لبون 
And then he finished, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saying, Bintu Makhad wa bintu Labun wa hiqqa wa jadha ila akhirihi. Fanassa al-shari'u ala al-dhukurati wal-unutha fa yajibu attiba'a al-shari. So the shara, in the tradition, he's mentioned, if it's not a female, then you can have an older male. But the rest, he specified, you know, female, female, female. So then we know, according to the hadith, what is being specified, the female ones. But what the author mentioned is from the way of the Qiyas, from the way of the Qiyas. Any question concern? No. It depends on the collector. It depends on the collector. So I hear more about the value and the camel itself. So if he doesn't have, um, I mean, he can buy it and and uh, and give it and keep his nisab, you know, or sell part of it to get the camel, or you know, they have an arrangement with the collector. Any question? Tayyip. Fasl fi zakat al ghanam. Now, zakat related to the ghanam. Ghanam, we said, goats and sheep. Wa yajibu fi arba'ina min al ghanami shah. A shatu fi arba'ina min al ghanam. So the obligation of the zakat in al-shiya, um, al-shat, 40. For every, when you, someone have 40 shat, he will give one shat. 40 is one shat. And if he give one shed and he will have remaining 39, and the next year he have 39, he will, don't, will not pay zakat. So, aqallu nisab al-ghanam arba'oona shat. Aqallu nisab al-ghanam, the minimum nisab of the ghanam is 40. And in 40 is the payment of shat wahida, one shat. Wa qawlihi wa fi mi'a, wa fi mi'atin wa ihda wa ishreena shatan. And 121, the zakat is two shat. Shatan, shatan. Then you have from al-waqsu, is 120 minus 40. So you have 80 shat, 80 shat does not have any zakat in it. 80 shat. From 40 to 120, the zakat is one shat. 121, the zakat is two shed. So al-waqsu, which is the part of the increase that does not obligate the zakat, is 80. وَفِي مِئَتَيْنِ وَوَاحِدَةٍ ثَلَاثُ شِيَاهِ And two hundred and one, three shiyah, three. And then again, al-waqsu thamanun. So the, the increase of 80 does not have any share. Which is mean from 121 to, uh, to 200. To 200. There's no share. There's no increase of zakat.
is only one get to 201. Then he said, ثم في كل مئة شات في كل مئة شات شاة which is mean after the two hundred and one every time you add a hundred you add a shat. So, قال ثم في كل مئة شات شات إذا زادت على مئتين وواحدة ففي كل مئة شات فتستقر الفريضة على ذلك and the فريضة will be stabilized over there every extra hundred you add one shat So at three hundreds is still three shat. Three hundred and one four. No, three hundred three shat. Yeah. And three hundred ninety-nine three. Four hundred four. So at the at completion of every hundred, one share. So 201, but the next one will be 300. And then 400, 500, 600. At 99, there is no share. 399 is still three. Because 201 is three, right? قال وفي مئتين وواحدة ثلاث شيء up to three hundred three then four hundred five hundred at the completion of every hundred you add one share so he has a thousand share he will, the zakat is 10. وَالْخُلْطَةُ تُصَيِّرُ الْمَالَيْنِ كَالْوَاحِدِ وَالْخُلْطَةُ وَالْخُلْطَةُ تُصَيِّرُ الْمَالَيْنِ كَوَاحِدٍ What is the khulta? What is the khulta? The khulta, if you bring two Al-Malu is the investment. Al-Malu is the asset that someone has. If you merge two wealth together, it becomes one. So in this case, of course it becomes one. In this case, for example, you have, you know, someone has ghanam and another one has ghanam. You put them together, it becomes can compute it as one, one nisab. Someone, for example, has 40 ghanam, and the other one has 40 ghanam. They put them together, they become 80. So it's going to be computed as one. Someone has 60, he only pay one shat, and the other one has 60. And they put them together, it becomes 120, uh, or let's say 62, it's gonna be like 124. So they're gonna pay two shares together. So when you say al khultatu when you put them together, they become computed as one nisa. But this is, has some details. Hmm? So if you merge or you mix, two investments together, it will be regarded in the Sharia as one single investment. People are partner, someone has 100, the other one has 100, and they put them together. 
they invest together. In the end of the time of the zakat, they will not say, oh, I, my, I pay on my hundred zakat and you pay on your hundred. Say, no, if they've been together, you pay on the two hundred. That's the difference. Well, khultatu is only concerned animals, the cattle. Does not concern money, gold and silver and, uh, you know, money. This is specific for al-an'am. Because when it talks about money, everyone is going to pay on his own profit. But when it's going to be like a business, the business is going to pay his own zakat. But here, khulta is like they are animals together. They eat together, they stay together, so their zakat will be together. Example, he give an example. Someone has ghanam, and the other one, the same, he has ghanam, and the third one has ghanam, and another fourth. And they put them together, all together. فَتَصِيرُ الْأَمْوَالِ كَالْمَالِ الْوَاحِدِ So when you look at them together, you you deal with it as together. Not like everyone say, no, this is my part, and this is my part. When you split them together, there is no zakat. So what are the aspects of this merging the, or put them together? Not really merging, but put the animals together. When it will be applied. When someone, for example, say, oh, no, this is mine. I need to pay on mine. I said, no, this animal, they've been, they've been subject to the khulta. Therefore, they're being considered, they will be considered as one, as one nisab. The two category of khulta, we have khulta tul a'yani wa khulta tu awsafi. Khulta tu a'yan wa khulta tu awsaf. Khulta tu a'yan wa khulta tu awsaf. A'yan is referred to people. So you have two people, they are partner partner in a flock or these animals. So if they are partner, they, you know, and it belongs for both to them, then it's going to be computed as one Nisa. He gives us an example. Someone passed away and he had two child, two children, and he had uh, 80 shet, 80 shet, 80 shet. So this 80 are in partnership, belongs for both child who are the inheritors. So this is shariqatul a'yani takunu bil So the fact to compute it as one because they belong both of them, it's from the inheritance. So the zakat will be applied on 80, it's not going to be applied on 40 and 40. Or two people, they bought together a whole, for example, farm which has all these cows. It's going to be those cows computed as one investment, not divide them because what they get is a profit. But you cannot come to the investment and divide it and we say everyone is going to pay his account. This khulta, I am. Because they borrow together, they own it together. The second one is khulta to awsaf. There's specification who make this type of mixing, mixing them together, put them together to be considered as one nisab. In this case, everyone knows his, his goats, for example, or his sheep. He knows them. So why we apply the zakat on them as one nisab? There's, for example, three 
everyone has someone has a hundred the other one has 120 the other one has a hundred okay and when the collector of the zakat he gonna come to the zakat and collect from all of them 320 instead of doing 100 120 and 100 Or on the evil loan, the evil is going to be a big difference. So here he said, there's actually aspects who make us uh, consider this hold. What are these aspects? He put them in four, uh, five. Five. So if all these cattle... They are, you know, sharing. The partnership, if half of it, for example, died, is going to, those half is being lost for both partners, right? Not one of them said, oh, I own this, which have, uh, had died is yours. That's why Cholta we consider it under one Nisa. In this case, if something like this happened, you know, the, the one who declared the loss is his own who died. He said, these are yours, because they know it. Hmm? If these animals together, cattle, for example, in, uh, they, they share one, for example, there's the Fahad, the Fahad, is the one who, uh, you know, the male among the, the ghanam to help, you know, for the reproduction. So if they share one fahad, they share one fahad. So that's one of the aspects. So all this animal, three people, they come, they put their animal together, you know, the ghanam, and they have one fahad who will be sharing. So this sharing fahad. The second, qal, uh, they share al uh, al masrah al masrah min al sarah na al masrah ay yasrahu yasrah and to go and to you know in the same pasture they go to the same place from where they eat yasrahuna ma'a ba'd they share the al masrah And here the action is like they have one shepherd who take them all together. Al Mar'a is where they eat. So we don't say like uh, the, these who uh, belong to A, they go to this up north hill under this hill and those who be together. No, they all together they go to one place. So they share Al Mar'a. The fourth one, they share al-mahlab. Al-mahlab is the place where they, they brought, bring them a special, you know, maybe designated place in the farm to, to get the milk out from them. So they process it, they put it in bottles. So it's all done together. The fifth one, they share, they share al-murah, al-murah. In the stable is the place where they pass the night and where they, they will be held in the night. So if owners, they bring their cattle together, to share all these aspects, then the zakat will apply on them altogether, not separately. That's the meaning. Qala, uh, wal khultatu tusayyul malayni kal wahd. That's the meaning of it. So we have two khulta, khultat ayan, and the second one khultatu awsafin in the way that we mentioned. So for the awsaf, which is required, you know, sharing, like al-fahlu, al-masrahu, al-mar'a, al-mahlabu, and then al-murah.
al-fahlu, you know, for the ram or like a camel for the nuq, al-masrahu, the way they had been taken, you know, for to uh, to find the food, al-mar'a is the same place, al-mahlab is where they, you know, they've been taken to, to get the benefit from them, like, you know, the milk, etc., and al-murah is where they uh, rest and they, you know, the place of, uh, of dwelling. And this has been taken from the tradition that they use how the, uh, at the time, the Arab, they used to, uh, you know, treat and they bring the animals together to be treated. وَيُشْتَرَةُ فِي الْخُلْطَةِ أَنْ تَكُونَ كُلَّ الْحَوْلِ أَوْ أَكْثَرَهَا So other condition that to add is in this khulta, when they been together, it required to fulfill the condition of one year, one year, or the uh, big part of the year. In the first uh, khulta, because they are partner, we don't have any issue. But the second one, a question will come, like everyone, he own, uh, you know, his part. Why when it comes to the zakat, you know, uh, the zakat is being computed on the whole number of the animals. And we said why, because of the aspect, how they live together, they go together, they eat together, and it's being considered as one, one man. And we have a hadith of the uh, narrated that Abu Bakr in radiallahu ta'ala Abu Bakr. In a hadith or in a statement قال وَلَا يُجْمَعُ بَيْنَ مُتَفَرِّقٍ وَلَا يُفَرَّقُ بَيْنَ مُجْتَمَعٍ خَشْيَةَ الصَّدَقَةِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنْ خَلِيطَيْنِ فَإِنَّهُمَا يَتَرَاجَعَانِ بَيْنَهُمَا بِالسَّوِيَّةِ So here Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala he's setting rules learned by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, لا متفرقين, Which is mean there's people they are concerned and they don't want to pay or they want to um, avoid paying the sadaqa. Avoid pay the sadaqa. So what they do uh, is قال لا يجمع بين متفرقين. Not like two they have, you know, everyone uh, a number. So they put them together when the collector comes. Say this is ours. So this is uh, an evidence. When you put them together and the collector, when he comes and says, he will say, okay, so they've been together the investment or the zakat will be on all of them. Now, but depends on the numbers. The numbers you might, when they are separate, you pay more zakat than when you combine them together. And it might be when you they are together, they want to separate them to pay less zakat. So to do such a thing is an ill action in the heart and your defect into the intention. So this is here lack of his sincerity. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala قال لا يجمع بين متفرق ولا يفرق بين مجتمع خشية الصدقة. So you don't collect, you know, different animals who belong to two owners together and or separate them just for the sake of, of the sadaq. You don't want to pay enough sadaq. وَمَا كَانَ مِنْ خَلِيطَيْنِ فَإِنَّهُمَ يَتَرَاجَعَانِ بَيْنَهُمَ بِسَوِيْهِ And if they were like mixed, then the process will be done on them, and then the owner, they will be, you know, splitting together what they've been paid to the zakat in, in a way. 
مثال قولي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يفرق بين مجتمع خشية الصدقة because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said it someone should not separate between groups or between the animals why he's he's like have that bad intention to not pay enough sadaqa example قال someone has 40 share and the collector is will be coming tomorrow so he will make فأجعل 20 منها في مكان و20 في مكان اخر what he will do he put 20 in one place and other 20 in another place فإذا جاء العامل وجد هذه الغنم 20 the collector when he gonna see in this place he's gonna see in the farm or the place how many you have 20 20 you don't have sadaqa he's gonna leave but this person has 40 he should have paid uh, one فلا يأخذ عليها زكاة لأنها لم تبلغ النصاب قال ولا يجمع بين متفرق خشية الصدقة بحديث of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that we mentioned it was the saying of Abu Bakr but he reported from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم example someone own 40 شات and another one uh, 40 and the third one 40 all of them 120 all of them 120 فلو اعتبرنا كل واحد وحده لوجب ثلاثة شيء. If everyone going to pay on his own, everyone is going to pay one share. So it's going to be three. But if we put them all together, we say, oh, they've been together the whole year. How, long, how much are you going to pay? You're going to pay one. So here, they put them together to avoid to save two share. That be, doesn't belong to them. Wallah. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, Qala la tufarriqu bayna mujtama'an. They were already together. So don't separate them because you don't want to pay zakat. Wala yujma'u bayna mutafarriqin. And don't bring together those who already they've been separated. Why? Khashyata, khashyata sadaqa. And this is, therefore, uh, from this hadith, you understand that the khulta and whatever has been already not separated and together, you keep them up together and the nisab will, will apply on them. Hmm? Uh, some of the things that just to emphasize uh, in this khulta, First thing to uh, to remind what we have said al khulta la tu'athiru fi ghayri bahimat al anha al khulta mixing merging putting together the investment in this case cattle it does not have any effect on other than the cattle For example, people, they own a garden, a big garden. And everyone has, uh, you know, there are 10 people, everyone has the tenth of it. And everyone has to have, you know, that minimum requirement. So if you divide it by five, 10, it will have less. Therefore, no one will pay zakat. In this case, two people they, you know, they have business in the same store. At the end of the uh, year, everyone has his own money. Both together, the money that will exceed the nisab. But every one of them is going to pay on his own money that he paying. So he has less than his other, they don't pay zakat. Because the business itself has its own zakat. Because the people who have business, they don't pay only one zakat. They pay the zakat for the business and their own zakat. Because from the business, for example, someone, he has a salary from the business. He has a profit distributed from business. That he added to his own savings. And his partner has the same thing. So he said, not because we work on the thing, so the, the business, our investment will put it together. No, the business, he has his own 
zakat, and everyone has his own money. Which is then this khulta, when they have the same uh, work in the same place together in the same business where they are partners, uh, everyone pay on his own. In this case, of course. Uh, if someone, for example, have uh, here in different states, here in the state has, for example, you know, 40 uh, shed, and in another state far, you know, in Illinois, he has another four. He will be paying on 80 or he paying on on 40 each. Here, you know, the opinion, according to Al-Jumhur, he has to pay on all of them because it belongs to him. But according to the author, and following the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu he will not pay. Why? Because they've been separated from the beginning. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Don't put them together. So in this case, he's going to pay 40 and 40, one shed here and one shed here. If you put them together, he's only going to pay, pay one shed. According to the Jumhur, he it belongs to him. But according to the author, as they've been in different states, therefore they have different management, and then they need to be regarded as different, different misal. The third mas'ala in uh, al-ikhtilat, if uh, the one that he has the animal with, he's not following the Islamic faith. He's not Muslim. Here, the zakat will be only on the Muslim if his part get to the Nisa. If they have 80 and the Muslim has 40, the zakat is going to be collected on the 40 only because the other person, no zakat will be requested from him because the first condition of the zakat is al Islam. If two Muslim, they have a partnership in many of the uh, goats. One of them, he his part, he used them for a naslu wal waddab. And lahu wa I mean, he's going to have a farming product from this form. The other one, the 40 that he has, not for that purpose. He wants to just sell them in the market. In this case, the zakat is only of the 40 because in the beginning, the other 40, they had for sale, you know, to do business with it. Uh, then don't have zakat because the zakat only on those animals to have the farming, you know, use and not uh, to be sold or to have a business. So those are good cases. If someone say two partnership, they have, you know, uh, 500 uh, goats. One partner, he used them for farming, you know, uh, whale. And the other one, he used, you know, just, he put them there you know, and to get them in the market every other week or things, things like that. So your question is, say, what, what is the zakat to be paid on? And the question is to say, the one who's doing business, how many he has? You say he has like 250. You say deduct the 250 and the rest is then he sub to pay zakat on it. That's how the calculation. Yeah, doesn't doesn't have zakat on it. He the the zakat is on the business, on the profit generate from the business, and the the goats that he will have he going to have compute them as inventory. Well, so the inventory it will be the value of every one of them based on the value of the purchase that he has, 
or for some scholar based on the value of the market, how much he's going to sell it today. Not sell it, how, how much he's going to purchase it today. For example, it will be like someone has selling books. He bought the book for $10. The evaluation when you're going to make the zakat based on that invoice of ten dollars, or you look at the price, how much the book if you buy it today, it's going to be nine dollars or twelve dollars. That's going to be this. So it depends on the marks and depends on the uh, you know calculation. The same thing for the goats here. The same thing as any item put for sale. So they say the goat we got it for uh, you know seventy dollars each. So it will be seventy dollars is in the inventory, and then whatever he made the profit and the zakat will be paid on on all of the tijar. It's like exactly the balance sheet, and whatever he make as in the income statement, and what he has that's what he's gonna pay the zakat on. Any question? طيب باب زكاة الحبوب والثمار. We go to الحبوب باب زكاة الحبوب والثمار. باب زكاة زكاة الحبوب والثمار. الحبوب are the seeds, the grain. الثمار are the any thamra, thamra is the fruit. Fruits. Huh? No, not food, fruit. Al yeah. Hubub is like the green. What thimar is whatever comes from the trees mainly or plants. Tay Yakul Musanifu Tejibu fil Hububi Kulliha Walau Lam Takun Kuta. A zakat is obligatory on all the types of hubub. وَلَوْ لَمْ تَكُنْ قُوتًا Al-Qutu is, is like people that use it for sustenance, like the bread, like the wheat. Uh, things like that, al quot So used as a provision. So some scholar said, any type of food who's not used as a provision in the common, you know, uh, habit of that society, it will not be zakat should not be applied on it. That's why that's why here the author he said no is obligatory on all the types of food like the grain and seeds. You know, even though it's not a, a known as to be provision, you know, in this society, in that particular society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 267, 267. Or you who believe, anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasab. Or you believe, give from whatever you have earned. The pure thing that you have, the halal of your kasab. And from uh, which we have, uh, you know, uh, provide you out from the earth. So anything that is being planted and then have its crop, that crop it required to have zakat in. So there is no specification as you see. Is things that you use for your own food, your sustenance, 
you need the necessity that people they use like you know a flour and barley and uh, wheat no anything that's why qala uh, here uh, the ayah walaw lam takun quta which is mean when he said walaw even though it's not quut which is mean there's other scholar they say if it's not quut sustenance necessity something that it have in the habit of the uh, of that uh, particular society to use as food i mean and this is is very important you know to know i don't know if here uh, in the us they have uh, something to be specified as quot you know in other countries you know there's things if you if you increase the price of it you'll see the next day revolution in the street Huh? It happened. People, for example, when you're talking about uh, maybe uh, in Somalia, tea and sugar. <laughs> you know, people, they cannot live uh, without tea. So, for example, the bread. The bread. In many other countries, when they double the price of the bread, that town is almost burned if some else other things like people usually don't eat if they triple the price people they don't care why because the bread everyone eats the bread it's like this is their sustenance this is their quote this is their quote that's why to keep some stability in some country they subsidize some of the food because people they only you know eat that type of things so what will be the quote here hamburger allah <laughs> i don't think they have food here huh? the bread yeah yeah in North Africa in the 80s, they had revolution because of that. Yeah. Yeah. In part of Asia, it will be the rice. That's good. So the rice is you pay the cat on. What if it's not good, for example, um, but nuts? Do you pay the cat on it? Nuts is not good. If you double it, people they stack on the bread or on the rice. So here, according to the author, I give an example. Even if it's not that sustenance or provision needed, you have to pay the cat on it. Okay. So because some of the scholar they uh, associate or they put as one of the wisdom of paying the zakat is the quot. Is the quot why? Because that's is it like a currency in the system of the economy, you know. Right. قال وفي كل ثمر يكال ويدخر Another ayah, just uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, 141. 141, Surah Al-An'am. So Allah is the one who did uh, created for you all these gardens with all these trees. And the palm trees and the plants that you see would have a variety of fruits or variety of food. Was huh? and the olives, Romana, the pomegranate, and the, listen what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here. Eat from this fruit, eat from his food that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala providing for you when it comes, when it's ripe, when it's ready to be eaten. وَآتُوا حَقَّهُ يَوْمَ حَصَادٍ 
and provide, uh, observe or do and pay its right at the time of the harvest. So all this food that Allah, there is no specification that requires zakat. طيب what is the nisab قال وفي كل ثمر يكال ويدخر وفي كل ثمر يكال ويدخر الثمر is the fruit type of the fruit and he specified the fruit قال يكال ويدخر so it had to have two specifications which is from the habit of the people to sell it or to make the transaction by al mikyal al mikyal is by volume not weight mikyal wa yudakharu and is saved he gave the example of dates people they store dates so it's a food you store and they used to sell it by volume so that's zakat in it al zabibu qala ka zabib dried a dried grapes. So also, so these two specifications, these two elements are the condition for this type of fruit to have the zakat applied, zakat applied on them. Before getting to that, uh, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Because before coming to the Nisab, to understand how he put the Nisab in weight. Hadith of the Prophet قال فيما سقت السماء والعيون أو كان عثريا أو عثريا العشر وفيما سقى بالنضح نصف العشر. Now. The zakat in, in, uh, in the vegetation and the plants and the fruits, the zakat, everything that being watered by the, by the rain and by the spring of water. Awkana athriyan, athriyan is like, it's either those trees, palm trees, who has enough water so the roots are getting from that water, from the nap or the water that comes and as a rain and get into the ground and the roots will take it athriya. Or people, they plant things close to the water. So uh, the, the, the dirt is always kind of wet. The dirt is kind of moist. So that doesn't have an effort from the uh, agriculture or the planter to for the water is being given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this, there's the tenth. The zakat is the tenth of the crop. قَالَ فِي الْعُشْرِ وَفِي مَا سُقِيَ بِالنَّضْحِ بِالنَّضْحِ Now, if it's been watered and there's effort, you bring the water and the nadh, you know, you uh, kind of it has an effort of the agriculture to drive the water to this, uh, to the plants, to the trees or plants. This is nisful ushur, half of the ushur. So it's like ushur is the 10%. Nisful ushur is five. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فِي دُونِ خَمْسِ خَمْسَةِ أَوْسُقِينَ صَدَقَةِ In general hadith, the nisab is five awsuq. Five awsuq. Al-awsuq is الوسق uh, is 60 صاع 60 صاع الصاع 
it has also converted in mudud. Well, mud is this way, al mud. But a saw of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's what is being calculated and we refer to. Uh, is about two kilogram and and forty gram. Two kilogram and forty gram. So do the calculation. So if you have five awsaq and every wasaq has sixty sa, so this is comes to three hundred sa times two point zero four equals six hundred twelve kilogram. Six hundred twelve kilograms. That's the nisab. Which here, قال ويعتبر بلوغ نصاب قدره ألف وستة مئة رطل عراقي. نحن we already did the conversion from the sa. So his his conversion is to turn it into weight, and we're going to explain why. But the conversion that we need is around six hundred twelve kilogram. Okay. Let's have some of uh, other uh, observation, insha'Allah, and lata'if before to go farther. Qala, ikhtalaf al-ulama, rahimahumullah, we have a difference of opinion between the scholar about the nature of the, uh, the food that uh, require uh, that the zakat will apply for it. Because we have the author here, قَالَ وَلَوْ لَمْ تَكُنْ قُوتًا Even if it's not one of the uh, necessary type of food in that uh, town or society. The known and al-mashuru in the, uh, in the school of thought of al-Imam Ahmed is what the author mentioned. تَجِبُ فِي الْحُبُوبِ كُلِّهَا وَلَوْ لَمْ تَكُنْ قُوتًا is all the type of the grain, but even though if it's not something that uh, is necessary for the food of that type of society. As I explain it. الحبوب ما يخرج من الزروع. So it's going to give us what are the hubub. Whatever is being comes in the crops. والبقول وما أشبه ذلك. And the vegetation, vegetables, and everything. So, uh, give an example. Al burr, al burr is the wheat. Al shairu, barley. Al uruzu, the rice. Al dara, the corn. What dukhan is the millet, cereal grass. And the types of this, the types of this grain, this tea, this. Uh, food known. Then you go to the flour, to the things, all of that. And when he said, وَلَوْ لَمْ تَكُنْ قُوتًا As we said, this is a difference of opinion between the scholar, because some of the scholars, they say what is not as necessary food in that society will not have the zakat. Uh, example, he given us an example. For example, الْحَبَّةُ sauda, The black seed. It's not good, but people, they use it, they eat it, they put it in food, and it's a grain, it's a seed. According to the author, you pay zakat on it if you have it. Unless you put it in a business, so that will be the zakat for the business. Well, but if someone has it and plant it and pour it on the side and storage and he has more than 612, Kilogram will pay zakat on it or not? According to the other scholars, they don't pay zakat because it's not a, 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 a necessary food that no one that people eat. But for the for the author, no, it is. It is it is uh, food that you pay zakat on. Okay. Now, wa fi kulli thamar. يُكَالُ وَيُدَّخَرُ 
a summer or the uh, product of the of the trees talking about uh, apple uh, oranges or this type and every summer that it you know uh, sold or like uh, exchange with volume and stored that's the one that the zakat is it as we mentioned and the summer the type of this food which is not uh, you know la you care is not like weighed by the volume uh, or evaluated by the volume wala yudakharu and is not stored la tajibu fihi zakat the zakat is not an obligation on it even though things like among the food that we eat like fawakah fawakah can be the dry food the almonds the you know uh, things like you know strawberries because those type of thing you cannot store so the thing that you cannot store they say you don't pay zakat on it al khudrawat many of the veggies you know because you cannot store laysa fi zakat لأنها لا تكال ولا تدخر. and when you say you don't لا تكال they don't exchange it with volume uh, which is mean it's not in that society at that time is a product of transaction so they been sold into small quantity people that to use it and consume it uh, you know in in a very short time and you see here in the zakat uh, kind of we have the time the time to store it therefore a food that is valid to be helping in the transaction for the for the needy people because if you have a food that uh, cannot be stored and cannot be evaluated and you keep it on the side then when the needy person will come to take it is already gone and the needy person if you give him a lot of you know food like strawberry after one week everything is going to rotten so what is going to do in the next weeks so this is the wisdom of storing that's why some of the scholars said they add qala qut al qutu so it help people to use it if you give him black seeds he's not going to eat every day black seeds so that's also the uh, opinion of the other scholar it has kind of uh, you know uh, reason justification if we can say طيب. So he gave us an example, as we said, dates and dried grapes. The dates and dried grapes, it apply on the two conditions that he mentioned. If الكيلو والإدخار and it can be storage for years. I don't know if you visited some places where they have dates. I mean, you see it in Medina, mashallah. And we have it back home in the south of the country. People, they have big, like, you know, barrel for the whole year, dates. That's how they used to do. So they, you know, their food is like dates and bread and things. I think not anymore, but... <laughs> قال والمراد بالإدخار أن عامة الناس يدخرونه. I mean storing is like the majority of the people they take it as storage. So it is common in that society society that they store it. The second opinion they restrict the zakat on the حبوب on four. الحنطة والشعير والتمر والزبيب. The wheat, the barley, the dates, and the zabib, the dried food, uh, dried uh, grapes. And this is mentioned in a hadith, but the hadith is da'if. And if it were this hadith sahih, then we will not have this all difference of opinion between the scholars. The third opinion, they said, 
the zakat is obligatory on everything that is planted and comes out of from the earth. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and whatever Allah will bring you forth out from the, from the earth. أَنْفِقُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ وَمِمَّا أَخْرَجْنَا لَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ an ayah that I already mentioned, 267 from Surah Al-Baqarah. And also the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu قَالَ فِي مَا سَقَتِ السَّمَا Whatever the heaven or the sky, the rain, will be watering, there's the cat. The fourth opinion, which is the, also the opinion defended by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, the zakat is only on the qut, on the food that can be stored. And this is when you look at the spirit of the uh, distribution of sharing, it will be also have a very strong uh, justification because the food that store that you can store in the food who can be shared and helping others. But looking at the uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu the Sunnah, uh, it might be the closest opinion is the uh, or the stronger opinion is the opinion of the author, because. The Prophet Sallallahu determined, he said, Al-Khamsati Awsaq. And when he said, Khamsati Awsaq, five Awsaq, so the Prophet Sallallahu he determined the volume. So anything that can be evaluated. The conclusion, all the type of food from hubub, you know, wheat and barley and rice and all the type of grain and the fruits require, uh, obligate, uh, zakat is obligation on it with the condition of al idikhar with the condition of storing. And if it's not, can, cannot be stored, then uh, there's no zakat on it. There's no zakat on the food that cannot be stored. One mas'ala, one mas'ala, what will be the ruling uh, on the storage with the new technologies? People using fridge, anything you keep it there, it will be fine after years, to the point people, they don't know what they're eating, the meat. Maybe being slaughtered, you know, in the World War II. <laughs> it happened, actually. Some people, they say, we've been eating meat older than us. Wallahu alam. Maybe not here. But. Taib. Uh, the answer to any type of storage made with the, for example, the fridge and the freezers and all this type of this uh, new technology uh, it will not apply on a zakat as long as it can be stored in in normal condition like for example the wheat you pour it and you store it you don't need any effort so the effort to put for it a, a power and everything so already the effort to to water it if you water what you, uh, if you water from A to Z, your plants, you don't pay zakat. Even if it's muddakhar. If you do half of the effort, you pay half of the zakat, as the Prophet Sallallahu said. So here, to store it, you put in all the effort. So this storing is not a natural storing, therefore the zakat will not be applied. And there is more opinion concerning, you know, comes in the details for every 
uh, type of food uh, but insha'Allah we uh, we all what we had done cover you know the uh, the author's uh, part here about al-hubub wa thimar it will be enough insha'Allah قال ويعتبر بلوغ نصاب قدره ألف وستمائة رطل عراقي. so the نصاب is ألف وستمائة رطل sixteen hundred pound عراقي pound. and عراقي pound it has a special you know different pound that you might you might know. Huh? No, no. Because every country has its own pound. Subhanallah. Every country, they have their own measure before. Every country has its own way of measurement. Tai. Now, he, the author here, he is sharing with us something that is uh, good to know. He said, when we come to the weighing, weighing, there's things that you used to weigh, like is light, and there's things that is heavy. If you're talking about wheat, you're talking about flour, you're talking about dates, you're talking about grapes, which one is going to be your unit to refer to in the weighing? قال اعتبره العلماء بالبر الرزين الجيد there's, there's type of wheat known heavy and good quality that will be the reference in their in their mizan and then uh, this color they transfer from the volume to the weighing. Because the volume, it will have a lot of differences. Because the volume, it might be, you know, take for example a bucket. I say this is our reference in the volume. This is will cost, for example, this. And then it might be the whole town take that, you know, the measurement of that volume and use it. But already in another town, they're using different packet. Maybe would have you know contain different volume. And the cubicle is the volume, and the uh, weight is the gram and kilograms. So to make it more standard, the scholar they convert the volume into into the weight. The sunnah came with the kale because the kale, the volume, that's where they have at that time. Because the sa' and the mud, you know, differs. We say sa' on nabawi is not like the sa' that is being used in, uh, for example, in different places of the Arab Peninsula. It's not the rattle that is used in Iraq, etc. So they... Uh, the scholar from the beginning, from close to the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they convert the volume into weight. Why? With the methaqil, with the methaqil, and those methaqil also can convert it to kilogram because they know it, you know. Uh, and it is, you know, uh, stable from that time of the Prophet ﷺ, al uh, it's been narrated that the sa' of the Prophet Sallallahu is four mud, four mud. In some places it's three, but the sa' and nabawi is four. That's why in some places three, and the Prophet Sallallahu in his time it was four. So if you take in consideration the unit of measure is the mud, then for one to get to a saw, you multiply by three. For the other one, you get to multiply by, by four. Then in the end, you're going to have big difference. Big difference between uh, uh, this calculation. And as we said, a saw, the prophetic saw, 
is 2 kilograms, 40, uh, 40 grams. So what they did, what they did, just to have an idea, they come with inner, which is kind of the saw of the Prophet the saw, the volume, and they put in it wheat from this type of quality. And they, and they make the mizan, and they weigh it. That's how it came to 2 kilograms 40. Then this 2 kilograms 40 is going to be the base and build on the rest of the quantities. قال وتضم ثمرة العام الواحد بعضها إلى بعض في تكميل النصا. Uh, do you have any question concerning what we have done? Okay. Just question I have to say. Uh, if we're talking here about the real stuff, the stuff that is actually in the Palafra, what about the one that is the hydrogen structure? How would you consider that as a volume or as a weight? How is that being weighted? Like what exactly? Well, hybrid, you know, nowadays products are not something as organic or as, as original as possible. Now, we're talking about the farm, the agriculture, what you get from the earth. Yeah. That's original. Even, even on the earth. How you put that uh, pesticides and things. Right. Right. Whatever comes, you pay the cat on it. Because that's his treatment, nothing has to do with the food. So if he had something, you know, ruined the food somehow to hurt people, that he, that's the action of the one who did it. Nothing have to do with the crops that it comes. Whatever comes for the crops, it will be calculated based on the, on this ansiba. No. قال وتضم ثمرة العام الواحد بعضها إلى بعض في تكميل النصاب. Now here, what if someone has two gardens? The one garden has its crop this month, the other garden waiting its crop in the two months. He's gonna say at this crop, he says, oh, this is, is not enough nisab, so I will not pay zakat. We tell him, no, for the whole year, whatever you have, you pour it together. You know, because some trees, you know, being, you know, uh, treated uh, in different time, they will have different time of crops. We're talking about the same, the same type of, uh, of vegetation or food or, or fruit. So that's what the scholar here, the author, he's telling us. Qala, as you see, qala wa tudammu thamratu al-'ami al-wahidi ba'duha ila ba'd. So you have dates here and dates here, but this is, you know, when they collected these days, the other one, it required like two months to wait, for example. Said, so do not compute them separately. You have to do them both. So if you have, for example, here, three kilograms, and in the next one, you're going to have four, 400 kilograms, 300, 400 kilograms, you can do whatever you want with the 300, but when you have the crop before the end of the year, you're gonna calculate it like 300 and 400, so you have 700, you will pay the tenth of the 700. You don't say that 300, I already ate from it, I already paid, you know, sold it, so I don't have it. We said, no, the calculation is for the whole year. You had it in that year as one of the harvest, and then you sold it, or whatever happened, and then you have the second harvest from the other gardening, your zakat will be on both harvest. On both harvest. Don't say this is happening this time, and then after a month this has happened. We say no, this is to dhammu. You add one crop to another with the condition there will be the same type of food and in the same year. So the first crop, someone had it in June, the other one in the beginning of August. By the end of July, he sold everything. So in August, he had the new crop. So he said, do you see, look what I have. He said, what you have already, you know, collected before, what you had. 
during this year you have to add it that's the meaning fi qawlihi wa tudammu thamratu al-'am al-wahid ba'dha ila ba'd fi takmil an-nisab and you add the fruit of the one year to each other you add it to each other to continue or to reach the nisab fi takmil an-nisab قال لا جنس إلى آخر. You don't add a جنس. For example, the one that you did is orange, and the next one that you're gonna have, you're gonna have, for example, apple. Now, if you don't have any other orange, so that's the harvest of the orange. You'll do it on the orange. You don't add, you know, different types. You don't add them. Every one you will have his own, his own zakat. قال لا جنس إلى آخر so you don't add one type to another type طيب طيب والسابير uh, the the adhan will be in 10 minutes or so or less it's already adhan mashallah uh, the isha will be at 8 so would you like to get your break now after the maghrib Huh? Aisha is at 8. So after Aisha, we finish at 9. We have uh, an agreement here. Ijma' or Ikhtilaf? Different opinion or one Ijma'? So when you come back, inshallah, the Salat will be in 10 minutes. So let's say 6.15. We end the salat at six thirty. You will take twenty minutes, huh? So we'll be here six fifty, inshallah. Kind of that, khair, inshallah. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد we'll try to finish إن شاء الله the uh, paragraph the fossil that we uh, related to زكاة الحبوب والثمار إن شاء الله تعالى <تصفيق> أبتو ولو نبت في أرضه قال وأفادنا المؤلف uh, <تصفيق> Uh, we already said في قوله uh, رحمه الله وتضم ثمرة العام الواحد بعضها إلى بعض في تكميل النصاب لا جنس إلى آخر So if he has two uh, crops in different time they will be added to, uh, uh, to each other like the example that is given here the different types of dates the, the, you know as you see in Medina الله, those who visit Medina there's different types of dates so those he put them together because the jinns is the same. Different types of grapes, different types of apples. So he put them all together and it will be considered as an isab. With the condition that there will be, you know, uh, the crop of the same year. Tayyip. <clears throat> Qala. Yeah. The qawluhu. ويعتبر أن يكون النصاب مملوكا له وقت وجوب الزكاة now the other condition the nisab that he has the nisab from the hubub 
the nisab that he has, which is the minimum required requirement or the minimum required of the quantities of the hubub of the thimar to apply the zakat on it. At the time of the zakat, at the time when he's going to be the, uh, paying the zakat, that nisab to be his his property, his own property at that time. Well, he need to be his own property at that time. And it must be considered that the nisab must be the ownership that the property of the one who going to pay the zakat at the time when the zakat is obligatory. So at the time of the crop, that crop needs to be his ownership, his, his, his property. If he sold it before, and then at the time of the crops, he's not his, so he doesn't pay zakat. فقال أن يشترط أيضا أن يكون النصاب مملوكا له وقت وجود الزكاة. And the time of the zakat, for example, in the date, الظهور الصلاح في الثمرة بأن بأن تحمر أو تصفر وفي الحبوب أن تشتد الحب بحيث إذا غمستها لا تنغمز. When the uh, the zakat is obligatory. For the fruit, when the fruit are ripe, ready to be put in the market, or ready to, to eat, ready to reap, that's when the zakat. So when you're talking about the dates, when it's like, you know, ripe, you see it, you know, it's, uh, it's ready. That's when the zakat is obligatory. For the same for the habba, for the seeds, for the grain, when it's still like, you know, uh, moist and smooth, it's not its time, but when the grain becomes hard, like the wheat, when it's hard, that's when it's ready to, for the harvest. So that time is the time of wujub zakat. The wujub zakat, the obligation of the zakat, is when the fruit or the wheat or the, the, the crop is ready. That's when the, so at that time, exactly at that time, the, the one who's going to pay the zakat, where the nisab, it must be his, his ownership. So that's qala, the meaning of this sentence. So he must have the ownership of uh, or owning the nisab in the time when the zakat becomes obligatory. Yeah. The crop. The crop. It doesn't require that he own the land. Yes, it's the crop. It's his. <coughs> If he, if he, for example, if he had sold uh, the crop before it becomes ripe, he doesn't have zakat on it. If he has, if his land is his and he sold everything, then at the time of zakat when he's ripe, he's not his, it's not his property, so he would not, he would not pay zakat on it. The same if he, own it after it's been ripe. He will not pay zakat. He will wait for the next harvest. Okay. Then he said, "Qala fala tajibu fi ma yaktasibuhu al-laqatu aw yaakhuduhu bihasadihi." Fala tajibu. Also, is not the zakat is not obligatory on al-laqat. Al-Laqat. Al-Laqat, the one who picks the fruit, those who been dropped or fell from the tree. Fell from the tree. So there is no effort for people to, you know, being hired to, to pick the, the fruit, for example, uh, dates from the tree. These dates are on the ground. They fell by their own. At that time, at that time, there, subhanAllah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide or have the provision to go to the weak ones or to, to the poor ones. So it's known in those traditions that anything that fall in the ground 
you don't have the permission to ask the owner of the land to eat it. Which is actually was done in time of the Khulafa Ridwanullahi Ta'ala alayhim. I, I need to find the text. Uh, I, I don't think I have the text here. But in the time of the Khulafa Abu Bakr, so this is one of the practice that they have. If you, for example, working in a path between trees and everything, and there's things that on the ground, you have the right to eat it without asking the permission of the owner. But to climb on the tree and take even one seed or one fruit, that is haram because that's not yours. So here, Al-Laqat, if those people who come to pick, people they are thinking, and whatever it left on the ground or fell on the ground, they pick it up. You know, they take it for their own selves. So that's, you know, and the owner, they know that he's a tradition, that he's, subhanAllah, type of rahmah, and Allah's blessing on these on this ones to come, you know, he come to the thing, whatever is on the ground, he'll pick it up. But after what if a group together they pick up and they reach the Nisab? They go all through this land and they reach the Nisab. From what they picked is like reach the Nisab. Would they have to pay Zakat? They don't pay Zakat for the reason that they do not own it when the Zakat is obligatory. They didn't have anything. That just had been ripe and they pick it up after it been ripe. So the zakat, the time of the obligation of the zakat passed. So it will not be applied to them because they didn't own it. They just get it because it was on the ground. That's what he said here. قَالَ فَلَا تَجِبُوا فَلَا تَجِبُوا فِيمَا يَكْتَسِبُهُ أَلَّقَاتُ And is not obligatory on if it reached the nisab on what the laqat, the laqat, laqata is like he picked. So those who picked from the ground is not an obligation on them. Qala wala aw ya'khuduhu bi hasadihi. What the means aw ya'khuduhu bi hasadihi. Aw ya'khuduhu bi hasadihi. Ya'khuduhu bi hasadihi. Is like the owner of the land or of the crop, he will hire someone to 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 do the job of you know getting the the fruit from out of the tree. Especially you see this is in the palm trees or the olive trees. They need like people specialists for this palm tree. They have to climb and get cut the the branches, and so it's a bean work. So there's people they say, if you work for me to do this job, I'll give you for example. Uh, tenth or fifth of the of the crop, for example. So he pay him from the from the crop itself. So here he said, which is has difference of opinion among the scholar. But here, لا زكاة فيما يأخذه بحصاد. If what he collects as compensation from his work, he not gonna pay, pay zakat on it, even though he would reach the Nisa. Why? Because he didn't own it. He didn't have it at the time when the Ozakat is obligatory on those fruits or on this uh, on this type of food. قال for example إذا قيل لرجل احصد هذا الزرع بثلثه فحصده بثلثه فلا زكاة عليه في الثلث. He doesn't have any zakat on that. If it was his compensation, because of the time of the zakat, he didn't own that. No, when it becomes ripe, that's the time when the zakat is obligatory. Him, he going to pick it and collect it and pour it in a storage for, and he gonna pay him from that crop. So when he start to pick it, he already passed the time of the zakat. And then he gonna be paid afterward. So we have two conditions for the zakat to be paid in this, uh, in the hubub wa thimar, qala al-awwal bulugh nisab. First is to reach the nisab. 
The second, أَنْ يَكُونَ النِّصَابُ مَمْلُوكًا لَهُ وَقَتَ الزَّكَاةِ The nisab need to be his own property. His own, he owns the nisab at the time of the zakat. And we said the time of the zakat when the fruit or the hubub are ripe, ready to, to be picked or ready to for the crop or the harvest. طيب. Now he said, قال ولا فيما يجتنيه من المباح كالبطم والزعبل وبزر قطونا ولو نبت في أرضه. So this is things they they grow in the land without any effort. You didn't plant them. There's a big rain came and things they 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 come out. قال فلو جن الإنسان منها شيئا كثيرا فإنه لا زكاة عليه. Why? Because for example, he given us for example, a zabel is kind of wheat or barley that they call it, you know, common like wild in the in the mountain. البزر القطون he has like kind of type of grass that they use. They use, you know, for for food. They use for things. Uh, so these things, if they grow on their own, and he can pick some of them, or he he cut them, and after cutting them, he might have more than the nisab. Would he pay zakat on it? The author here say he would not pay zakat, simply. Because when it was on the ground, belongs to everybody. It came, it grew on its own self. So when he picked it, it's after being ripe. So at the time of ripening, it wasn't his his property. Which here we have different of opinion. Some scholars said if it grows in his land, then is his property. Therefore, he pays a cat on it. But here, that's why the author قال. ولو نبت في أرضه، even if it grows in his land، he should not pay zakat. why؟ because he didn't make any initiative to to plant it. it grows on its own. and we go back to حديث of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. قال الناس شركاء في ثلاث. people are شركاء. they share equally with no price. Three things: الماء والكلاء والنار. الماء، water، الكلاء، whatever grows on its own, grass, this type of seeds, things. That's you know everyone shared. No one will say this is my property. That's everyone is equal in that. One nar and the fire. And this, what it grows on its own in its land, is from the kala. So he doesn't own it. But if he will use it afterwards, he will not pay zakat on it. Taif. A conclusion that the zakat is obligatory on all the hubub and thimar that they can be stored and weighed and muddakhara evaluated and stored qutan aw ghayra qut is either to be in necessary food or not zakat is an obligation so this is according to the author and for that, two conditions need to be satisfied. The first one, bulughun nisab, that it will have the nisab, the minimum nisab. The second, that it will be its property or his property or her property at the time of the zakat. Any question? Inshallah, next time we start with uh, the miqdar, how much to pay and all of that.
Then after that, we do the ketur naqdain, uh, gold and uh, silver, and the business. And the last, uh, then the ketur fitr, then distribution of the ket. We're going to talk. There's khilaf. There's, there's a difference of opinion behind it. Yes, inshallah. You have a crop of honey. So <laughs> we accept zakat here. <laughs> uh, any question, inshallah? 